Winter time is definitely one of my favorite times of year, mainly because the uh, winter ale start coming out. And if it were up to me, we'd just skip pumpkin spice season altogether. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. And if the box on the table didn't already give it away, today we're gonna be taking a look at the Viper V765 Mechanical Gaming Keyboard. It features an aluminum top plate, kale clicky switches, and individual per-key RGB lighting. So getting this thing out of the box. Back up so we know what we're talking about here. Here we go. Got a wrist rest, a key puller, and a quick start guide. All right, that's simple enough. Adjustable feet, very nice. Ooh, I like those, I like that feel. Ooh. Feeling the uh, the key through the box, I wasn't sure I was gonna like these uh, switches. These are uh, kale clicky switches. That's very pleasant. Uh, feels very much like a blue, maybe even slightly stiffer than a blue, but uh, that same tactical feel you come to expect from a, a Cherry MX Blue. That's very nice. It's got a rocker control knob, uh, media keys along the top. That is a... I'm not sure how well this is gonna do in gaming uh, because of the resistance on it, but this is a wonderful typing keyboard. Ooh, I can already tell that much. So it comes with a, uh, looks like magnetic wrist rest. Ooh, that's very nice. Digging that. The wrist rest is a little short for, for my liking. Um, obviously I have fairly large hands. It doesn't even contact my hands. <laughs> I'll get a B-roll shot of that here in a second. Yeah, it's a little bit short. I would have preferred to see this be a little bit longer. Construction wise, it's a fairly rigid keyboard. It does have a little bit of wobble to it if you like bend it, but no one actually uses their keyboards like this. So that's pretty much a useless test. Uh, but when it's on your desk, there's really no flex or wobble to it at all. So maybe a little at the top, but I've got to press on the keyboard to, to make it do that. Under regular typing force, it's not moving at all. So A plus on, uh, on rigidity, I would say. I do like the, uh, the red braided table. And I also appreciate that for being a full customizable RGB keyboard, there's only one USB plug on the end of it. It's not gonna require ancillary power to get your RGB connected. So one cable, that's that's again a win in my book. So let's unplug my Velocifier here and get this guy to plug in. Always a great idea to swap hardware on the computer you're recording with. Ooh, very bright RGB, wow. That's an impressive amount of light coming out of that thing. Ooh, there's side lighting on this too. Check that out. <laughs> I didn't see that. So F12 appears to be your custom light profile setup. And what that allows me to do is without using software on the keyboard itself, set up a custom lighting profile. Yeah, so let's do F12. We're gonna set profile five. And at this point I go through and turn on all the keys that I want to be on. And uh, pressing a key just cycles through the colors. So the first color is red, we've got green, yellow, blue, white, pink, seven color options on that F12. But again, you can, uh, let's say I wanted WASD to be red and I wanted everything around it to be blue. There we go, nice and easy. So now my number keys and WASD are red and the other colors are blue. And I believe I hit F12 again and that saves the profile at number five. That's pretty cool, that's pretty slick. Way easier than, uh, in some cases, than hooking up to software because some software programs that I've used in the past have been just atrocious for for custom setup like this. I actually like that it's built into the keyboard and it's intuitive enough. I figured that out without reading the instructions. This is my first impression of this keyboard as well. So one thing I do like about this keyboard that I've just found is a lot of RGB keyboards with individual lighting. If you're doing an effect based lighting, it will, every time you initiate the effect, it'll cancel out the previous effect. So if I press a key and it's supposed to do a waveform out of there, if I press another key, it'll stop that initial waveform and then start again. This one doesn't do that. Literally just pulse it. It's not canceling out the previous waves. Really not a fan of this wrist rest. There doesn't seem to be a point to it. <laughs> it's too small, it's not thick enough. It doesn't even reach my hands. Yeah, there we go. 
All right, so if you like wrist rests, this keyboard's not for you. <laughs> One of the really cool features about this keyboard, if you're a, uh, a, a gamer or video editor or something like that, uh, is all 104 keys on this keyboard are actually customizable and programmable either through macro keys or just changing the functions themselves. So you can change the layout of this keyboard entirely and have that all be profile based. So profile one could be premiere editing and profile two could be first person shooter. Uh, profile three could be OBS live streaming and you can program the keys to do whatever functions you want. So if we open up one of the buttons, let's say F5, uh, we can do uh, single key press, we can do combined key press. So if I want F5 to be shift F5 for some reason, I can program that as the default function of that key. I can have it to do a macro, I can have it uh, run different functions on my computer, uh, open up a new browser window, open up my, my default web browser, uh, maximize or minimize windows, uh, open up shortcuts uh, or, or function keys, so copy, paste, etc. Uh, and then I've also got an advanced function for uh, my media keys here at the top, the stop, play, back and forward, to have those launch different programs. That is pretty awesome uh, and, and seems pretty intuitive to set up as well. So the Viber V765 is on Amazon right now for about $90. And for what you're getting for $90, I think that's a pretty fantastic deal. Uh, whether you're wanting to get into mechanical keyboards for the first time, that's a very approachable price, or whether you're a mechanical keyboard enthusiast and you're looking for specific functions out of this keyboard, whether it's the macro or the programmability of this keyboard. Maybe you like the lighting effects, maybe you like the aluminum back panel. That's certainly an allure in my eyes. But uh, for $90, this is a pretty fantastic deal of a keyboard. But of course, there's one thing that I have not tested on this keyboard and you can only test that one way. That feels so wrong. Still on, still working. Uh, that's a lot of water. <laughs> so if you hadn't guessed, this is also uh, dust and water resistant. Now, I'm, I'm sure dumping water on it like I did goes beyond the resistance rating of this keyboard. But it's nice to know that uh, it actually works. So we'll change it back to a reactive. Look, we're still working. <laughs> now, as this is only a resistant rating, it's not IP67 or 68 rated or anything like that. I would certainly let this keyboard dry out for an excessively long time after I soaked it in water. But as someone who has killed a mechanical keyboard by spilling a beer on it, uh, that is a pretty awesome feature to have, especially in a $90 keyboard with the other features of this board that you're getting. Sturdy construction, great programmability, excellent lighting effects, even though I can't figure out how to actually turn on or off those side lights. Maybe I'll have to read the manual. So quick addendum here. Uh, I was in the middle of uh, getting my video edited and the keyboard started freaking out. Uh, this is all it does anymore. Uh, now the keyboard does still work. All the keys still work. I did test that, but the RGB lighting seems to have taken a little bit of a hit with the, uh, the, the water. Now, Again, this isn't IP67 or 68 rated. This is only supposed to be water resistant, uh, but the RGB seems to have suffered some negative consequences from my uh, <laughs> great amount of water that I spilled on it. So keep that in mind. Uh, it's not perfect. It's definitely not waterproof. Uh, maybe when this dries out, everything will work just fine. Uh, but at the moment, that's what I'm getting. And just as I suspected, about 30 minutes later, I'm almost done with the raw cut of my edit here and the keyboard RGB has returned. So this is definitely not a waterproof keyboard or an IP rating of 67, 68, whatever, but it is nice to know that it will survive a, a basic spill like this. Again, I would not go around just dumping water on your keyboard, but it's nice to know that it will survive it. That's gonna do it for me in this one, guys. Let me know down in the comments, what do you guys think of the Viper V765? Do you think it's a pretty killer feature set for $90? That's definitely where I'm at in this one with uh, very few drawbacks, except for that. Uh, this is the only drawback. I, I like a good keyboard rest, wrist rest, and uh, this just isn't it. But it's waterproof, so I think I'll uh, ignore this one. If you are interested in picking up the Viper V765 for yourself or as a very late Christmas gift, considering today is uh, December 22nd, 
you're late. Uh, check out the Amazon affiliate link down in the video description. Every little bit that you buy from there really does help the channel out. And in fact, that Amazon affiliate link is now linked to UK and Canada, so I will get sales from those Amazon affiliate links as well. If you're interested in directly financially backing the channel, consider hitting me up on Patreon. A minimum donation of $1 a month gets you access to my exclusive Discord server. Chat with myself and the other hosts from Talking Heads pretty much 24 hours a day, as we don't sleep very much. As always, thank you all so much for watching this one, and I will see you in the next video. Merry Christmas, everyone. So today's beer is from our friends down at Nkasi Brewing Company in Eugene, Oregon. This is their uh, seasonal release Slayer. It's a winter ale, 7.2%. I'll read it in a second when I actually pour the bottle. Seize the season with Slayer. Layers of deeply toasted malt are balanced by just enough hot bitterness to make it deceivingly drinkable. Paired with a dry finish, Slayer is anything but your typical winter brew. Definitely got a real, real malty uh, nose to it. Lot of hop right up front. And yeah, kind of a roasted finish. That's, that's very pleasant. <laughs> That bitterness is rounding off into almost a coffee-like taste. Definitely not a craft beer you want to dive right into if you're new to craft beers. It's good, but it's very complex. There, there's some conflicting flavors in there. Uh, there's a bite from the hops, but there's a this roasty finish with the, the malt in there. Uh, it's really good, but it's a winter ale for people who are a fan of IPAs. Warming up just a few degrees. Oh, that is now absolutely balanced. On the side, they said it's uh, it's balanced by just enough hot bitterness. To me, the bitterness was way too extreme and the maltiness was almost like a burnt taste. Like it was, it was okay, but it really wasn't doing it for me. Warming up just a couple of degrees, maybe to about 40, I'm guessing this is sitting out right now. Uh, that, that maltiness is very rich and very deep and, and flavorful. And now that bitterness has actually died off just a little bit and now it is perfectly balanced. So don't drink this at, uh, at 34, 35 degrees right out of your fridge. Let it warm up a few degrees. Oh, that is delicious now.